back again, Pavi Daily Takes. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I've been talking about, you know, well, we started off talking about the young cores um, in the league. Um, there was actually a couple I forgot to mention. It was like the Knicks. Knicks have a great young core, but I don't think it's better than any other ones I named. Also, the Pelicans have a great young core, but um, I just like the cores I named a little bit more, I think. Um, because I think that there's just more superstar potential in those backcourts. But I want to talk about Luka Doncic and Trey Young. Um, you know, I've been on record saying it should have been co-rookie of the year. I still believe it should have been co-rookie of the year. I mean, I think that Luka's first half of last year was better than Trey Young, but I think that Luka's team last year was better than Trey Young's uh, for the first half of the year. And then when the Dallas traded away everybody and pretty much they were pretty much on evil, not not evil, but even – playing field, I think that they pretty much maxed each other. I think that I think that Trey kind of, in my personal opinion, got better as the season went on, and Luka kind of, in my personal opinion, stayed the same. Um, the only thing I think that changed with Luka was just, like, he had the ball more because they traded Dennis Smith and they traded everybody else, and, like, he was the only one there, so he had the ball more. Um, I think that Trey got better month after month, game after game, and I'm going to go on record that I think that Trey Young will end up having a better career than Luka will. Um, I think Luka right now might be in, quote-unquote, a better situation. Um, reason being, like, you have KP there. Um, you're in Dallas. Um, who else did they bring in in the offseason? I can't even remember who they signed in the offseason. I'd have to look. They, they uh, signed uh, Seth back. Um, I think that next year he might be in a better situation. But I think that Trey Young will play his position better than what Luka will play his position. I think that part of the reason for that is that I know people were like, it was Trey's size a disadvantage. Defensively, maybe, but again, you don't play defense by yourself. That's I, I keep preaching that. Like, nobody plays defense by themselves. Um, there, 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 are, there are always things that you can do to, um, you know, hide somebody defensively and, 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 like, shade help to their side defensively. Like, if Trey's going to give you what he's going to give you offensively, um, then you can figure out the defensive end. Um, I don't think he'll ever be a great defender. Um, he might be serviceable, but I don't think he'll ever be a great defender. But to me, I think him him, him, him being small is kind of an advantage. I think Trey Young could realistically average about six or seven free throws a night. Um, how many did he average last year? Let me actually go and look how many free throws Trey Young averaged last year. Um... Trey Young averaged uh, five free throws last year and shot 82%. So, actually, I'm going to take that up. I think Trey Young can imagine about eight free throws a night. Reason being is, I mean, he's very good at drawing contact, and also he's small. So, like, if you push him a little bit, he's going to go flying. Like, it's not football. I think people talk about size in basketball, especially for, you know, point guards. I don't – I mean, it's an advantage when you're, like, you know, 6'6". Six, six. Um but same time, it can also be a disadvantage. Like I think that guys like Zion and you know LeBron and Giannis, guys like that, like their size is also a disadvantage to them sometimes when it comes to dealing with the referees because they really get fouled on on you know every single play. Like you could say, you know Giannis and LeBron have offensive fouls every play, but they probably have offensive fouls because they're getting fouled every single time they drive to the rim. They get fouled. Same thing with Zion. Zion's so big that. He's going to be very hard to referee. So he's going to take a beating because he's just 280. And it's not going to look the same when you touch him as it would Trey Young. If you get even a little bit physical with Trey Young, he's going to go flying. And, then, you know, he's already crafty. He's already good at the rip throughs. Like, I remember the game um, in which the Warriors played uh, the Hawks. And he made Steph Curry pick up three fouls in, in the first half to the point where they came out the second half. They had to switch Clay Thompson on to him because he was giving Steph work, you know. So I think that. Trey's size would actually lend to him, would, would actually be kind of an advantage for him. Um, I think he's already one of the best passers in the um, NBA. And I think that also the like, Steph Curry co uh, comparison was very lazy. And this is not to even jump on Steph, but if what Trey Young is, what, 19 years old right now? 19, 20 years old right now? 20. If you want to, 20 or 21. If you want to talk about as a basketball player, right? Okay, you want to argue that, fine. But if you're talking about the point guard position, at 20 years old, Steph Curry was nowhere near the point guard that Trey Young is. I think that Steph Curry has been a two-guard masquerading as a point guard for all these years. Um, and I think that Trey Young is literally like the, 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 the evolved version of Steve Nash, in my humble opinion. 
I think that like Steph Curry is like the the evolved version of like is is like Steve Kerr on the greatest of steroids. Like if you put Steve Kerr's ratings up to ninety nine, but kept like Steve Kerr playing like Steve Kerr, that's what Steph Curry is. I think that Trey Young is like the evolved version of like a Steve Nash or like a John Stockton. Um, so I think he had a chance to. I mean, what in the Eastern Conference next year? You look at Kimball Walker, Kyrie Irving, Kyle Lowry. I think that uh, Trey Young has a real chance to. I mean, at least contend for best. It, well, not best, but but definitely top three. I think he has to contend for a a, a a chance to contend for a top three point guard um, in his conference um, next season. And I think that within the next five years, he'll probably be the best point guard in the league. I mean, the only thing that you know, was 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 bad with Trey in the beginning was um, his shooting, and you know, I mean, we're in the era of you know everybody loves you know like if you don't shoot fucking fifty percent and forty if you're not fifty forty ninety then you're not good. Um, and in my humble opinion, like I I love the way he played all season, like literally. I mean, you look at his stats, okay, probably his best month. Shooting the ball was January. He shot 44% from the field, 33% from three, um, 86% from the line. If you want to talk about true shooting, he shot 57% as far as true shooting. Um, but his free throws pretty much, for the, his free throws was 89%. The worst month he had, he shot 73% in um, December. Um, so... I mean, I think his percentages were pretty much fine. I think that the shot will get better. I don't think he'll ever be like a... He's not... He's too small to think that scoring is going to be the best thing that he does. But his passing is crazy. Like, the man came up... I think he's, what, top five in assists last year? Like, overall assists. He gave you 19 and 8 last year. I think next year he takes that to 20 and 10. Um, I also think that... I think that... The fact that he can come along with like you know a young coach and like a young team is great. Um, I think that this is kind of like Golden State two point and just the fact of um, there will be no power struggles. Like I think when Trey walks into this locker room, Trey Young knows he's the leader. Like from the second he'll walk in that locker room next year, I think that he knows that he's the leader of this basketball team and that this team and that this franchise is his. And I also think he has a chance to be. Um, the best Maverick, and not 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 the best Maverick, the best Hawk in history. Um, the even from Summer League last year when he was missing shots, I'm like, I don't care about him missing shots. Like his shot will eventually drop. What I care about is the passing, because again, I always thought he was a little bit too small to have passing, you no, know, to have scoring be the best thing he does. But moving towards Luca, the thing I worry about, not worry about, like I think Luca's gonna be a great player. He's gonna be a you know all star multiple time. Um, uh, may may even challenge Dirk for best Maverick ever, but that's like a lot though. Like Dirk is Dirk, um, and 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 like and like I think that Luca will be top three, um, at his position, whatever position they choose to put him at, because they went. I mean, they they had that man slotted from the one to the four last year. So whatever position that they finally decide to settle in on for him, I think he'll be a top three player at that at that position. But, um, I think that he's a little bit slow on his feet. I think he needs to get in better shape. As well, I don't think he was in excellent shape last year. I think he can stand to get in better shape. I think it worked out for him because he's—I mean—he's a big guard. Um, but I think he could, he could stand to get in better shape. And also, I wonder if playing professional basketball since you were 14 years old, if you know you've kind of gotten maxed out a little bit. Like I really wonder how, like how high Luca's ceiling is because he's been a professional basketball player for so long. Um, so I just wonder like how high. His ceiling is now. Granted, I could be wrong. I think he'll come out next year and give you like 24, 25 um, points a game. He'll be an All Star. But again, I think that Trey Young just has a real, real chance to be the best point guard in the NBA. Man, I, 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 I thoroughly believe that. Um, and just even, even just judging off what he did with the parts he had around him, like again, Luca came into a much better situation last year than what Trey Young came into. Luca came into a situation where they're rebuilding. We still have veterans, though. Trey came into a situation of, we've already started to rebuild here. Take the ball, motherfucker. Like, at least when Luka came in, you had Harrison, you had DJ, you had Wesley Matthews. 
Um, you had JJ off the bench. You had Devin Harris. So you had veterans all, and you had Dirk. You had veterans all around you to kind of like you know ease, like just ease you through um, the transition, and and you know everything isn't on you from day one. From day one, when Trey Young walked into Atlanta, everything was on Trey Young. Luca was in a situation where he could grow, and then they realized like okay, like Luca's really nice. All right, let's trade everybody out, get everybody out, and build around Luca. Trey was in the situation was in from 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 day one that franchise was his. And I think that for, you know, a nineteen year old kid, especially a point guard who's not big, like when you're, you know, a bigger guy, I think that that responsibility is a little bit easier, you know, on you because of just your your you know, your your uh, size and stature on the court. I think it's very hard to build around point guards. Um I think that in order for the Hawks to reach the level of success as far as like championship level of success, I think that the leading scorer doesn't need to be Trey Young. I think that that you know a guy like Cam Reddish has to be that guy that you know when you know you need a bucket, you go to Cam, or even maybe you know DeAndre Hunter. I see people you know with the Kawhi Leonard comparisons for him. Um, I don't think that Trey. I think Trey Young can be the best player on a on a on a championship team, but he can't be the go to guy. If you understand what I'm saying, um, you know the best player isn't always the go to guy. LeBron's been the best player on most of his teams. I don't always think LeBron was the go-to guy. I think even in Cleveland, LeBron was the best player in Cleveland. But I think Kyrie Irving was the go-to guy. Um, even like D-Wade, his first year, I think D-Wade was the go-to guy. Um, and even you know later on after that, like I, I, I still think D-Wade sometimes was that guy you leaned on to you know get you a bucket in um, certain you know um, situations. The Lakers, uh, the three P Lakers. I think that Shaq is the best player. I think Kobe was the go to guy. You know, so not always the best player needs to be the go to guy. And I think that that's what has to happen in um, Atlanta for them to reach you know championship level success. As far as like playoffs next year, I probably give Dallas a better chance of making the playoffs maybe than I would Atlanta, um, just because they're so young. You know, it, it's it's. Dallas isn't as young as Atlanta is. I mean, I granted they do have Porzingis coming back off of um, ACL. We you know we we have to kind of see how that goes. Um, but the Hawks are just so so young. Like they even have more of a youth movement and have even more rookies. And I don't think Vince is there anymore, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know who's gonna be that veteran presence. I mean, they got Evan Turner. I mean, maybe you know Evan be a good locker room guy to lean on. Um, but I think they'll be in a conversation for it. But I don't know if they'll you know. Uh, get that spot, but I do think Trey Young will be an All Star. Um, I think that uh, he'll be an improved shooter next year as well. I think that the NBA range kind of I don't actually actually don't think that at the beginning of the season he was strong enough to even shoot it from NBA range. I mean, even if, if you even just look at his shots um, in January and 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 and, and, and in March, I think they just look better because he just got stronger. Also, I think that like his deep threes, he has to learn about situation. And when to shoot him. Sometimes he was shooting some completely dickhead threes. It's like, bro, you don't need to do that at that moment in time. Um, but I think that once his basketball um, IQ improves and he learns about, you know, situation and like when to take which shots, I think that you know uh, that will also help his percentages a lot. Again, I, again, I, 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 I think that him being strong enough to get the ball from 26 feet was an issue. And also I think that he just took some shots that he didn't need to take last year, which is also why his percentages were um, what they were. Um, but yeah, when it's all said and done, man, like I, I think that Trey Young will have a better, you know, I look, I can't say he'll have more team success. I don't know, but I think that Trey Young will have a better individual career um, than what, excuse me, um, Luka Doncic uh, will have when it's all said and done. And, um, yeah, that's my column for the day. Pavel Daily Takes.